Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Tyler Sellers. I'm a New Jersey real estate agent and in today's video, we're going over how lenders hide costs and how you can avoid these sneaky tricks so that once you're under contract on a house, the initial X amount of dollars that lenders promise you that probably turned to Y at some point, well, we can avoid that from turning into Z amount of dollars. Look, lenders offer a great service. They help you purchase real estate, one of the biggest purchases of your life. And it's amazing that they do this, but there are so many lenders, there is so much competition in the industry, and people are loyal to the rate in this service, not necessarily the lender. So in this video, we'll be going over the tricks that they use to make sure that they get as much money as possible from every single sale of a mortgage, and we're gonna go over how to avoid them. If you like that, if it sounds good to you, Make sure you like the video, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell notification button so that you don't miss out on any future videos where I educate buyers and sellers just like yourself on the best ways to practice real estate. All right, let's get into the video. Let's do it. So something that I often see in real estate is a pre-approved buyer comes to me and they say, Tyler, I want to buy a home. Check out this fancy, shiny pre-approval that I have. I'm so excited to get started let's start shopping houses. And of course, I'm like, let's do this thing too, because I, I really am excited for people who get free approvals. But I know from past personal experience, as well as anecdotal experience, that not all lenders are created equal. And when someone comes to me with a piece of paper from some random lender, I just get a little reservation. I'm like, okay, look, it's great that you're pre-approved. How many quotes did you get? How comfortable are you with this lender? And are you sure that this person is going to be able to successfully close your loan and not sneak in a bunch of hidden costs? If they say yes, more power to them. If they say, mm, well, I don't really know. Well, then it's my opportunity to recommend a couple lenders. And I don't collect anything from any lenders that I recommend. I just simply need my clients to know about these lenders because these lenders have proven to be successful in the past. And when the lender is successful, well, it makes me look better because there's a higher chance of the deal closing. And of course, that's what we all want. So when a lender is giving you a quote, well, there's actually two kinds of quotes that a lender can give you. There is a quote and there is an estimate. So a quote is just that. It's a quote, doesn't really mean anything. It, it, it is an estimate, obviously. But when they give you a hard estimate, those numbers that they give you have to be valued all the way through the end of the deal. When they give you a quote, those numbers do not need to be honored. So keep that in mind. There's a difference between, between a quote and an estimate. Now, when they give you these, we're just gonna use quotes throughout this video, just so you know that you know these quotes are non-binding, but when they give you a quote, they're gonna include two sections of fees, and one will be the section A fees, and those are the fees that the lender actually charges you as a customer, and then there's the section B fees, and these are the closing costs, such as the attorney fee, the appraisal fee, the inspection fee, the title fee, and they basically fall into two buckets because the lender will not be able to actually control the cost from third party vendors, but they will be able to control the cost from themselves, the section A fees. So what do you have? You have lenders giving you quotes of section A fees that could change over time. Well, why do they give you one quote instead of just projecting what's going to happen in the future? Well, the lending industry is super competitive. There are a ton of lenders and the nature of the business is that customers are loyal to the rates and the costs. They're not loyal to the lender. So in order for most lenders to get business, if their products or services don't really add up to their competition per se, well, now these lenders have to basically hide some of these costs up front in order to convince you that they're going to be getting a great deal. All right, now that you have a basic breakdown of the kinds of closing costs and fees that are gonna be included with these quotes that you're gonna be getting from the lender, again, before you even start the home buying process, well, now you need to know how these lenders can actually change these numbers or kind of just guide you in a direction that you didn't initially know you'd be going down. So one way is that the lender will not give you the third party vendor fees. They're only going to give their section A fees. So there you're in the deal and you think that the closing is just going to be, you know, X amount of dollars. And it turns out you're under contract. Boom. You got to pay 500 out of pocket for the appraisal. Boom. You got to pay for the title. Boom. You got to pay for the inspection. 
all these costs start adding up and you're like, wait, I still have to pay that initial chunk of money that you, that you told me as well on top of all these thousands of dollars that I'm building up over here. Like, why didn't I know about this in the beginning? Well, in those cases, the lender could easily say, well, you should have known about that if you had known how to buy a house. It's not the lender's job to educate you on the entire real estate process. It's just their job to give you the quote of what you owe them. That's how it works. You hire them, you're asking for their services. They could estimate everything and they should estimate everything. So make sure when you're shopping for a lender, you find one that upfront is just trying to explain to you how expensive it can get to buy a house. If they're gonna be upfront with you, they're much more likely to be honest and open with you as you communicate throughout the transaction. Another way, way number two, that lenders can artificially change the prices on you, well, there's some aspects of their quote that are flexible, that can change. What if the lender, what, what if lender A puts in $2,000 of taxes and lender B puts in the accurate number at $12,000 of taxes? Well, of course, lender A's numbers are gonna look super affordable and like such a great deal. However, when it comes down to it, taxes are not uh, something that the lender can control. Taxes are controlled by the county, by the state. So what happens is taxes stay fixed and lender A has to say, oh, look, we actually have to adjust for the tax on this house and boom, their costs are the same or even more than lender B. So that's one way that lenders can get your business without you knowing that they're actually kind of being sneaky behind your back. As crazy as it sounds, that does happen. And then the third way, which is the scariest way, in my opinion, of how lenders can get your business is by hiding the fact that in order to get the rate that they're quoting you, you're gonna have to pay thousands of dollars in points. Well, what is a point? A point is simply 1% of the total loan amount. So if you're buying a house for over a million dollars and you're gonna put whatever amount down so that your loan is for only for one million, well, one point would be $10,000 because that's 1% of a million. So if you have to pay multiple points in order to get the rate that they quoted you, well, here you are thinking you're gonna get this great rate, you're so excited, and boom, you can get the rate, but it actually turns out you gotta pay 80,000 to $100,000 in points, and these points go right into the lender's pocket. And so it gets very complicated and very difficult to navigate if you hit a situation like this, I have seen it happen. There's gonna be a lender out there somewhere in most cases that can solve the problem and get you that loan without all those points. But the fact that it came to this point and you trusted someone throughout the process so far and, and, and they screwed, it's a shame. So those are three ways that lenders can hide the costs that are included with any loan in America to buy a house. And just to give you an idea of how to avoid them. So the best ways to avoid them are to definitely get a full breakdown of all the costs up front, and then ask for how they calculated each thing. That's the best way to do your own due diligence and avoid getting screwed over by a lender. But another thing you can do is find a real estate agent that you trust and ask them about the lenders that have been the most successful in the past for their clients, because some lenders are simply amazing. And if you find one of them, you're good. I wouldn't even worry about the rate if it's going to be a one, a 0.125% difference. I would go with the lender who's definitely going to close a loan, who communicates with me, who's open or from me, honest with me. That's what I want to see in a lender. So let me know if you agree. If you found any value from this video, please make sure you hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you see what I'm bringing into YouTube next. And hey, please share this video with someone who needs to see it because personally, I know people who are buying houses and they're only shopping with one lender. And I just got my fingers crossed that it's all going to work out for them. But I know that there's a lot of renters that got thrown in the gears in this industry. So I hope this video helped you a lot. Thanks so much for tuning in. Mr. Sellers Homes, checking out.